We're now lucky enough to be joined by Ian, and Ian is one of the drivers here at the Tank Museum of the fantastic Tiger One. Um, Ian, thanks very much for joining us. On tanks, every morning what we'd have to do was a first parade, and of course the Tiger One was no different. So to give you an idea now what the first parade actually involved on the Tiger One, Ian's going to take us on a quick spin round. On the Tiger, first parade. It's quite a long-winded process, so it does drag on, but it's better to safe than sorry. The first thing we do check on the outside of the Tiger, or the exterior, is tracks. Uh, tracks are really important because track wear and um, track pins. Each pin has a clip on the end, so it retains the uh, pin within the, each link. So you've got to watch out for things like that so nothing comes apart. Slack in the track, so if there's too much slack, it's going to be too sloppy, it's going to make the drive not very good on the tank. So we always, always check adjustment. On each side, obviously, it's what's known as called the uh, final drive. Uh, within the final drive is filled with oil. So the other thing we have to do is check the oil levels. If the oil's too low, obviously it can cause a catastrophic failure within the final drive, which we don't want. So they're checked as well. You've got one this side and obviously one on the driver's side. What's your drip tray for then? In? That's uh, a leak. <laughs> yes. You always get a leak, so no matter how so but as long as you check it and you check the right levels, happy days. We check for sprocket wear, any pickup marks on the teeth, we try to keep an eye on those. Uh, road wheels. Uh, we try. Every wheel station is greased, so that has to be checked as well and greased up. The rubber on the road wheels, we check. There's no more um, being picked off, or it's cracking, or it's deteriorating. So we keep an eye on the road wheels. We've got some uh, access panel here. This really is for the inertia starter. You can take it off and visually get in, inside with a torch and look all within the engine bay. Um, you've got coolant pipes. You've got the, obviously the engine there, and just checking for any suspect oil leaks and that, anything we find. As you can see, it's pretty dry on the floor, you know, but obviously there's things called belly plates on the hull of the Tiger. Sometimes we take those off and just double check so there's any leaks or anything like that. I'd that say that's pretty amazing because even on Challenger 1, Challenger 2, you find drip trays underneath it and leaks yeah, and all the rest of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> you don't get me wrong, you're going to get the odd leak. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but going back to the adjustment of the tracks, the track adjusters are housed in here. Wow, it's really unusual. Yeah, so they're in there. So it works on like a cam sort of idea. So to adjust the tracks, so that's all up housed in there. And when you said about the um, track tension, eh, what is, what's the sort of right track tension then? I mean, I would suggest at the moment, obviously, that. Uh, the track is just got to be touching the second road wheel end on okay. the outer edge, so it's just it's just right where it is now. Okay, there were two ways to start the Tiger One. The first one, obviously, was a very traditional method, um, using the electronic start in the driver's cab, and the other way was to do an inertia start. Um, so Ian's now just going to quickly take us through and demonstrate to us as well how you do an inertia start. First of all, we have the uh, access cover that has to be removed, and then we've got the adapter plate for the inertia start handle, and. Lower down here mounted is the actual handle for the inertia starter. And then you push that keyway in and it engages the starter on a flywheel and boom. Easy? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've now moved up onto the back decks um, and he's going to give us a quick spin round what we actually do on a first parade on there. Within the engine compartment there's uh, more or less uh, three main things to check. We've got things what's called the fan drive gearboxes. Uh, one's located on the left side, one's located on the right side. They have got oil in them and dipsticks so they'll be dipped and checked. We do them when they're stationary and you, what we do is when we run the tank and we've got them engaged, we check them as well when the engine's running and the, the fans are engaged, so you check them as well. The next thing is, is the main engine oil. Main engine oil is practically directly underneath me, because uh, it's a dry sump, there's a separate oil tank, uh, there's a dipstick underneath there as well. What we do is pull the dipstick out, obviously there's oil on the dipstick, it's safe to start. We put the dipstick back in and the other thing is just another visual check all around the engine. We've got coolant pipes, petrol pipes, any sort of smells that we're not, you know, with fuel because being a petrol uh, driven engine, you've got to be safety all the time. Carry on with the uh, first parade on the Tiger. Uh, the coolant side is checking the coolant on Tiger. Um, either side of the rear of the tank are two radiators. To check it, we've got this radiator here down by my foot. Uh, obviously, just we undo the cap 
and check the level for the coolant in there. Make sure there's no leaks or anything or there's no damage or anything to the radiators. Also on the cooling side, uh, where Richard stood, underneath the, uh, the grills there are the cooling fans. There's two uh, fans each side. So what we do on the first place, those will be lifted and we will inspect the fans for any wear, any damage and make sure they're moving freely. To check the fuel, um, it was round here on this side of the deck of the tank. There is another access panel that I've removed and there's the top of the fuel tank. That's the way we will fill the fuel tank is there. Uh, we haven't got a luxury like a fuel gauge, right? we just use a, a measuring stick to check the quantity of fuel within the fuel tanks. So basically, uh, that's about the bits that we do on the outside of the rear deck of the um, Tiger.